know, the bees won't matter though. They amazingly stay alive actually in this process. Maybe we should go and get the bee brush thing. Should we get the brush? Or should we just do that? Get all excited. I found if I put the honeycomb in this bucket, I've got a little old metal screen that I've um, bought from a cooking shop for sifting flour it was for, but it doesn't matter. And, um, but, like if we just put it in there for a start and let this drain out, and then tomorrow, or sometime, I've got another knife and I'll cut through it to get the last of it out. So I just got this cooking thing. I mean, you can get, I've got some proper uh, honey sifts as well, but this one, just the one I had from before. So I normally just put it like that in over the top of the bucket. And then that will, so you can see where the last lot has been dripping through there. And then I just sit it over top of my honey bucket and line it up to make sure it all gets in there. And you just leave it sit there overnight or for a day. Thanks to the miracle of time, it's the next day. We've had the initial um, drain off, so now we're just gonna slice the honeycomb that we picked out of the top of the bee box. Now, if you really want to get excited, of course, you put it somewhere warm, it'll go even quicker. But the back of our little warming car is all full of other frames of honey that are getting ready to be extracted, so. We could call this cold pressed, couldn't we? <laughs> anyway, just like that. Put our screen back on. I don't know if you can see how much honey we actually drained out of there already. How good does that look? Oh, feast fit for a, one of those Vikings. <laughs> I think the Vikings used to have honey. There we go. And that's all, and then we'll come back and hopefully We'll have some honey in the bucket.